I'm Stephanie Butzer, and we're on top of Denver 7 in downtown Denver. But this story takes place about 200 miles southwest of here in the San Juan Mountains. The high country is already getting a lot of snow. Avalanches are already happening. And so we talked with some avalanche experts about one of the most beautiful and the most dangerous parts of the state for these kinds of slides. This is the Million Dollar Highway. It's the stretch of US 550 that runs from Uray to Silverton in southwestern Colorado. As you can see, you need to look no further than our Discover Colorado Photography Group on Facebook to see the views through this valley are priceless. It is a beautiful place. It is a really a stunning drive. But scenes like this show the winters here are relentless. It's a very uh, avalanche prone area because we have really steep slopes that uh, drop right down onto the road. In fact, it's one of the worst stretches of road in the continental U.S. for avalanche danger. It cuts right through the heart of the San Juan Mountains. Uh, these are really big peaks, very steep terrain. Uh, they are loaded with avalanche paths. 120 avalanche paths to be exact, nearly three dozen of which the Colorado Avalanche Information Center says pose risk of significant damage. The only thing that keeps the road open through the winter is the science of forecasting. Avalanche forecasting is uh, a mixture of uh, some really technical work and um, some very um, simple boots on the ground work. And some serious nerve. So the roadway is only um, as wide as two lanes and the, the guardrail can't be put in because there isn't enough shoulder area for that guardrail to go in. There's also some areas where we do not have guardrail because the crews need that area to push the snow off the side of the, the roadway. For both its beauty and its brutality, the corridor is the stuff of legend. It has lots of history, and a lot of that history is tied to uh, avalanche occurrences uh, in that area. To fully understand the risks of this dangerous stretch of roadway, we visit a dark chapter of that history. In March of 1992, an avalanche flew down what is called the East Riverside Slide, the most concerning chute along the corridor. Two snowplow drivers working for CDOT were buried. David Jaramillo dug himself out of 20 feet of snow. Eddie Immel was killed. He was the sixth person to die at the East Riverside Slide, a tragedy that would change the future of avalanche forecasting. That was really the incident that prompted the development of the avalanche reduction program and that was what it was called back then it was called the u.s highway 550 avalanche reduction project san juan mountains of colorado that's denny hogan who was hired as the associate forecaster for caic in 1992. he would work alongside don bachman a titan in the industry tasked with preventing more deadly slides my eyes were as big as saucers we had to really just develop a systematic way that we could uh, develop and disseminate a daily avalanche evaluation for the highway and the path along the highway. It was a job with no shortage of challenges for the former Vail Ski Resort team member. The good thing about ski areas is that, you know, they're only open during the daytime hours, you know. <laughs> it was a real eye-opener to me that we had to cover the road seven days a week, 24 hours a day, uh, the two forecasters. So we, during storms, that was a real pretty monumental task. And we, we survived it, but we had some pretty long nights. Their team laid the groundwork for the evolution of avalanche forecasting. We were more seat of the pants back in 92. The science has changed from some good old fashioned brain power and feverishly putting pen to paper to advanced computer modeling aimed at predicting the next big slide. Today, they can spit out a report or query, then they can tell you, you know, the last time that this path slid and what the dimensions were and the last time it hit the road and the probability. They can really nail that down to where we were in the Stone Age and they're in the Modern Age. Also changing with the times, mitigation efforts. You may not know, explosives are often used to trigger controlled avalanches and prevent unpredictable slides. A process that's also moving into the modern age, including along US 550 on Red Mountain Pass. We are building towers that are remotely controlled and the tower might will contain um, gases and ammunition in um, explosives on the tower. 
the towers are remotely controlled either by a phone or a tablet or a computer. Because of the work that's been done, the Million Dollar Highway hasn't seen an avalanche-related death since that fateful day in 1992, a 30-year streak that is a feather in the cap of the CAIC. Um, you know, we are dealing with a natural hazard, so, uh, you know, we, we don't take that record lightly and we pay very close attention to what's happening every single day because there is an air of uh, unpredictability uh, with big weather events and uh, certainly with avalanche events, uh, but so far um, uh, the program has been quite successful. The CAIC has already hired a new person for this US 550 position and they didn't have to look far. Jeremy Yanko has more than a decade of experience and comes from the CAIC's backcountry forecasting team. His work is already coming into play as avalanche season has already begun along US 550. Peak avalanche season for the Million Dollar Highway and across Colorado is typically January to March. Reporting for Denver 7, I'm Stephanie Butzer.